Good morning, everyone. It's time to spend time in the presence of the Lord. If you can, help this stream strong by giving it a thumbs up, giving it a quick like. <clears throat> Let's just worship his presence. That's why we're here today. Amen. Let's magnify his holy name. Praise God. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does, he shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but they are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Praise your name. Holy, holy.
worthy, worthy. Praise your holy name. before the Lord, it's appropriate. I feel the fear of the Lord in here. Just be still. The Lord said to Abraham, now I know that you fear me because you didn't withhold even your own son from me. We give it all, Lord. Glorious gospel, Jesus. I worship you, Lord. to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Worthy. Worthy to be praised. Help us to be single-hearted, Lord, single-minded towards you. Help us to become simple, having only eyes for you, Lord. I exalt we exalt thee, Lord. We worship thee. Caesar, you have 
every day. Tell him how beautiful he is, how wonderful Jesus is. Beautify him with your praise. Beautify him with your worship. You are beautiful beyond description, Lord, too marvelous for words, too great for comprehension. Oh, how we worship you together. For you seek those who would worship you in spirit and in truth. We give you glory. We exist to give you praise. We have no other motive or reason. Just to be with you, Lord. You are the King of glory. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. How we worship. Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over all the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming <clears throat> with the clouds and every eye will see him even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord who is, who was, 
and who is to come, the Almighty. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Praise your holy name. Worthy is your name. Worthy is the Lamb. 
Worthy is the Lamb of God.
He beautifies the humble. We worship. Worship Jesus. Worship the Lord. I feel the holiness of the Lord in here. Oh, heaven, King Jesus. Worship Him. Side of yourself, forget yourself, put your eyes on the Lord.
lift him, lift him high. Worship him. In darkness cannot stay. Magnify his presence. You've driven it. Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him, and he delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack in any good thing. Come, you children, and listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. 
The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves, such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the souls of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. magnify you, Lord. We magnify you. the Lord with me. Forget every voice, forget every feeling, forget everything, every distraction, every care. All those things seek to compete for your worship. Let go of everything else. Let go of all of your care. Let go of all your, all of your distractions. Let go of anything that would compete against the knowledge of Christ. Cast every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And lift him high. Magnify the Lord with me. 
let's exalt his name together. Cast your distractions, cast your cares, cast your worries and your concerns. Let's worship Him. Be still, worship Him, magnify Him. To magnify is to make Him great. Enlarge Him with your praise. to him in your own way, your own song.
praise your name. We love you. We worship. still in your presence. You strengthen those who wait before you. Be still. Lord, you lead us by the still waters. You say to us, be still and know that you are God. You give power to the weak. You renew the strength of those who are tired. They that wait upon you shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. Look what it says, Isaiah 40, 29. He gives power to the weak and to those who have might. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. He gives power to the weak 
And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait before his presence. There is a renewing. There is a power that's invested in you as you wait. Wait before his presence. Don't look for anything. Don't ask for anything. Just wait before his holy presence. Allow the renewing and the strength of the Spirit to revive you, to restore you, to refresh you. Learn to be still. Learn to wait before Him. As you wait, the weight of God's glory will fall. As you wait, the weight of God's glory will fall. You will be strengthened and renewed. Power to the weak, to those who wait. Strength to those who wait. You 
maintain us in your love. You embrace us with your love. The guidance that you seek is in his presence like this. The breakthrough that you need is in the waiting. The answer's in the waiting. the scripture be your meditation today this morning he gives power to the weak power and to those who have no might he increases strength even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall look at what the what the, the promises right here those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Strength is renewed as you wait before the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Mounting up with wings like eagles is given to those who wait, those who soar. They shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Wait before the presence of the Lord. Wait before His weighty glory. sense by the Spirit the Lord is renewing, restoring, refreshing, strengthening many of you as you're waiting like this. For some of you it is new. Prayer is not limited to words. Prayer is the throwing of your heart to the Lord. Put all your weight on him and allow his weight to come on you as you wait. There is strength, there is renewal, there is power. 
There is tremendous power made available as you wait before God's presence, just like this. Some of you have been crying out for a deeper walk with the Holy Spirit, a deeper walk with God, something with substance. It's in the waiting. Waiting forces you to realize that you are standing and ministering before a person. God is a person. God is spirit. Those who come to him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And his word is true. Some of you are standing between two decisions. It's found in the waiting. The strength is in the waiting. Sharpness, keenness, discernment is found in waiting. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me what Jesus says for my yoke is easy my burden is light you will find rest for your soul my presence will go with you and you will have rest rest in his presence rest in him Waiting strips complexity, distractions. Waiting keeps you simple. Waiting is the strength of the spirit. Spiritual strength is in waiting.
renewal of strength. fullness of joy, joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's like waves, strength and renewal. Si pepe li prepe sobra ma, 
chi lebra sobre pele bremente lebre mia sai a pele brevita libre che sopra be sopra ba sopra mente wow thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you as you wait in this wilderness of life you will soar 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 high above the storm as you wait 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 in my presence in my glory for there is renewing for there is refreshment for there your soul will find joy there you'll learn patience there you'll cultivate and yield all the fruit of the spirit you will soar 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 for you will be edified as you wait in my presence just as a building is built brick upon brick layer upon layer so those who wait before me shall be built up shall be renewed shall be restored shall be strengthened higher and higher deeper and deeper and farther and farther hallelujah to the blessed lamb vorre bi celebremento sorrebesiendo yes as you wait before me you shall see as you wait before me your vision shall be enlarged as you come to me you will have eyes to see hallelujah ora mande libre sobre mente libre mia ora besiende libre me so rapapa sobre ba sobre ninte torre 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 baja i've said to you and i'll say it again come 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 away come away and be alone come away and be with me come away and concentrate come away and consecrate for i have been calling many of you i have been speaking to many of you to come away for this is a season of consecration a season of consecration set your time away to be with me set your affections only to be with me and i will show you great things that you have not known call to me and i will answer you and show you great and hidden things things not revealed things not known for i has not seen nor ear has heard nor has it ever entered into the heart of man the things that god has prepared for those who love him but i have revealed them by my spirit for the spirit searches all the deep things yes the deep things of god for you have received the things of the spirit of god that you may freely know what has been given to you so arise and shine put on your strength o captive daughter of zion loose yourself from the bond of your neck o captive daughter of zion and receive renewal of strength receive the renewal's touch receive strength from above Bebe siente libre mi so che rebebe siendo e le bremanti le brebe so e he he le fa lupa se libremento libre mia sali che le he so sa libre be so wow one door is closing as another door opens transition transition transition
Blessed Lamb of God, feel the powerful anointing. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hmm. Ile bremesso to rebekia. Sora mande le bremesia. One door closes behind you and another one opens in front of you. Gordon, you're going from glory to glory. From glory to glory. One door shall close behind you and another shall open. glory to glory, from strength to strength, from power to power, from grace to grace. I see you transitioning from one year to the next, one door to the other door. just prophesy this over you Greg Gordon you're going from glory to glory you're going from strength to strength Greg Gordon you're going from glory to glory Prophetic gift on the inside will grow stronger. You will walk in overflow. Overflow. 
overflow of spirit, overflow of grace. Beautiful work of purity, consecration, and the word of the Lord increasing. Thank you, Jesus. is a this is a right now word right now <laughs> Isaiah 40 29 through 31 
place you're holding in. Lord, we worship you. We give you glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace.
Praise God. Praise Him. What a beautiful time in His presence. What a beautiful time just to be with Him. And that's what He wants. He wants closeness, intimacy, absolute intimacy with Him. How can we deepen our walk with the Lord? How can we deepen our fellowship, our communion with Him? How is it that we can deepen? Give me one second, guys. <laughs> How can we deepen our walk with Him? One main way. Well, first, let me just say this. It's very important for us to understand that first and foremost, the Holy Spirit wants to strengthen your intimacy with him. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm laughing because I hear my son snoring in the room. <laughs> so I'm kind of hearing him over there. Um, but one way in which... God wants to strengthen us is by waiting before his holy presence. There is a beautiful, sweet exchange that takes place when we wait before God in prayer, waiting before him. Few wait before God's presence because it's uncomfortable we don't know what to do. Our thoughts become flooded with distractions. And we don't see the value of it because we don't see the benefits of it right away. But I believe that God wants to transition you into a deeper walk with him through waiting. The more you wait before the Lord, the more the weight of God's glory is seen in you. There are promises all over through the word of God that speaks on waiting before him. And I want us to meditate, to contemplate, to really think what the scriptures are saying as it relates to waiting, waiting before God. Waiting before God has many powerful, powerful benefits. And there is so many things that we can break down when it has to do with waiting. But let's read Isaiah verse, uh, chapter 40, okay? And we're going to read uh, verses 28 onward. And look what it says here. It says this. We'll just read verses 28 through 31. It says this. Have you not known? Let's stop there. Have you not known? The question is asked. Isaiah is giving this prophetic declaration. He says, have you not known? Why is that? There, because there's a, there, is a, there is a reality in the human heart to not know or to forget. And some, so many times we need to be reminded, have you not known? Have you not heard. So many times it's easy to forget his word. It says the everlasting God, the Lord. Now let's stop there. He's everlasting. He never ends. He lasts forever. Have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God? the Lord. And I love it because this word everlasting, it means without end. It means he is an unending fountain of eternal life. And it says the everlasting God, comma, the Lord. Notice how Lord is all caps. It's the sacred name of the Lord. 
It's where we get the word Yahweh or Jehovah, the everlasting God, the Lord, his personal name, the creator of the ends of the earth. What is he saying? He's saying this God, have you not known? Have you not heard that this everlasting God, this Lord, this, the Lord, his, he's personal. He's the creator of the ends of the earth. Neither faints nor is weary. Isaiah wants us to understand here in this passage that he does not faint. The Lord does not faint. The Lord is not weary. The Lord never ceases. The Lord is constant. The Lord is ever consistent. He does not faint. He does not grow tired. And the scripture says his understanding is unsearchable. Now let's just listen to this. His understanding is unsearchable. You cannot come to fully grasp his understanding. I heard this from a man of God once. The moment you understand God, you cease to know him. Because the word understand means you're standing over something. So it's you're under it's under your stand. The scripture says his understanding is unsearchable. So many times in our walk with the Lord, we want to understand things. We want to figure out, have understanding in an earthly mental capacity, but his understanding is truly unsearchable. Unsearchable. And so verse 29 says, he gives power to the weak. Power. Let's look up this word power here. Power, ability, strength. He gives power, ability, and strength to who? The weak. Power is only given to the weak. If you feel like you have power in of, of yourself, you receive no power. Because power does not come from us. Power comes from him. And his power is invested to the weak. There's something that happens when you rely on him and you acknowledge your weakness. Reminds me of what Paul said. He said, for when I am weak, I am truly strong. He says, I boast in my weakness so that the power of Christ may reside on me. The power of God is in the boasting of weakness. It's not a false humility that says, oh, look at me, I'm weak, I'm weak, look at me. It's, it's not a false humility. Rather, it's a true discernment of who you are, that you have nothing in of yourself. This is why Jesus says, for without me, you can do nothing. We must realize this. The power of God is given to the weak. Those who understand their limitations, their frailties. And it's something to boast about so that his power may be given to you. And it's amazing because in weakness, you have power. In weakness, you have strength. Now, this weakness is not a weakness. I'm not excusing sin. 
I'm what I'm talking about is our frailties and our limitations. Don't use scripture to accommodate a life of rebellion towards the Lord. Oh, I'm always going to struggle with this. This is my weakness. The, the, the devil in hell is a liar. God did not call you to carry something that he took upon the cross. Some of you have adopted a mindset of, well, I'm always going to struggle with this sin. I guess this is my weakness. No, that's not what the, that's not the weakness we're referring to. The weakness that we're referring to is our need of him. We need you. We don't have strength in ourselves. You want to walk holy before the Lord? Learn that. Learn that. Learn to throw your life to him. Everything is found in his presence. The strength that you need. The fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. The self-control. The freedom from bondage. Is all found in him. The Lord does not want you to walk around with sin, full of sin, full of bondage, full of addictions. That is not your portion. The Lord wants to give you power. Power over the devil and power over your flesh. Let me just say this. We give the devil too much credit. We give him a crown that is undo we 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 give him too much authority many times we blame the devil when the issue is our flesh you must recognize that he wants to give you power the holy spirit wants to give you his power, but he gives power to the weak. Those who know that they're in need of him. I heard one man of God say this, the Lord will never turn empty those who are hungry, except those who are full of themselves. The moment you cease from seeing your weakness, the moment you cease from seeing that you're in need of him day after day after day is the moment that you will see how the grace just lifts. The grace is given in humility. He gives power to the weak. And those who have no might. He increases strength. Power comes from him. Strength comes from him. Maybe today you feel like you have lost all of your might. Maybe you feel like your your hope has been deferred, making the heart sick. You have no strength. Well, the wonderful reality is that he wants to give you his strength. He wants to give you his power. And here's an encouragement. In verse 30, it says, Even the youth shall faint and be weary. Why is he saying that? Because youth are known for strength, for vigor, for vitality. For, for for energy, right? But it says, even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But look at what verse 31 says. But those, those who wait on the Lord, shall renew their strength, shall mount up with wings like eagles, shall run and not be weary, 
shall walk and not faint. The power and the strength and the renewal is given in the waiting. You see that? Those who wait on the Lord. Notice, Lord is all caps. It's the personal name of the Lord. What is Isaiah trying to say? That when you wait on the Lord, you're waiting on a personal, divine, the divine being. He's personal. He gives you his name. It is intimate. I find it interesting because in Genesis chapter 1, God is the one that is creating. In the beginning, God creates the heavens and the earth. All of chapter 1, the Hebrew word for God is Elohim in chapter 1. But in chapter 2, when he makes man, the first time we see his personal name, Yahweh or Jehovah or Yehovah or however you want to say it, his personal name, which is I am that I am, is revealed in the creation of man. What does that show you? That man was created to be intimate with a personal God. See, to the world, he's creator. But to humanity, he longs to reveal himself intimately. You see? Now, what does that mean with verse 31? Much in every way. Because it says, those who wait on the Lord. Anytime you see L-O-R-D, all in caps, it's his personal name. People get caught up in legalism. Oh, you have to say his name this way. You have to say his name. You're missing the point. The point is not that. The point is there is a revealing of his personality. There is a revealing on his personhood. There is a revealing of his character. That's what he's saying. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. to make their strength new again. To renew something means to become new again. See, in God's presence, his mercies are new. In God's presence, he's ever new. He's everlasting. He never grows old. It never gets old. It's like that song. He never uh, never uh, goes old. He never gets boring. I never get tired of giving you glory because in his presence, it's, it's fresh, fresh, constantly, ever new. His mercies are new. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You must learn to wait on the Lord. Now we're going to get into that in just a moment, but look at the promise to those who wait. Renewal of strength. When you learn to wait on the Lord, when you learn to wait on the person of the Lord, when you learn to wait before him intimately, you will renew your strength. And then it says, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. Have you ever seen an eagle mounting up? It's beautiful. The other day I was walking with my wife. We were walking on a trail and we saw this enormous, enormous eagle and it was soaring. It was soaring so high in the sky and it wasn't flapping. It was simply soaring. It was taken over by the current of the wind. And if you look at an eagle, an eagle will perch itself on a rock. I've said this many times, but it's worth repeating Many times an eagle will perch on a rock or on a tree and sit there. An eagle has large eyes. It's known for its sight. It discerns the wind and it yields to it. 
It flaps here, flaps there, and then the next thing you know, that thing is soaring. That is what it's like to wait before the Lord. Just as an eagle perches on a rock or on a tree and waits for the current of the wind and it yields and moves its wings and finds itself overtaken by the current of the wind, so those who wait before the Lord. When we wait on the rock of ages, the Lord Jesus, when we stand in the nearness of of that tree that was shed for us, the blood. We wait before the wind of the Spirit. And as we yield in waiting, then we are overtaken by the presence of God and find renewal of strength. That is what prayer is like. There is a grace that is given not only will you renew your strength, not only will you mount up with wings like eagles, but you will run and not be weary. There is a grace that is given. There is a new octane of fuel source for the man or the woman of God. It's called grace. You will run you won't be weary. You will be energized with the presence and glory of God. You will walk and not faint. You are given supernatural strength, supernatural renewal. It's all found in his presence as you wait. Now, what does it mean to wait on the Lord. Many times when we view the word wait, we think of waiting for a specific amount of time or waiting for God to do something or waiting for a season to pass. Oh, just wait on the Lord, brother. This too will pass. Just wait on the Lord. Yeah, there, there is seasons of waiting for situations to change. Yeah, there are moments in which there is a waiting that occurs that we have to wait in the timing of things for God's timing. But there is a waiting on the Lord that's different. The word waiting Again, I've said it many times on the stream. It is the word kava. Let me make sure that I pronounce it right. See if I can find it here. Koye. I think that's how you say it. It means to wait to await, to wait for, but it also means to twist. It means a twisting, like a braiding. Like, have you ever seen a, a cord or a rope? When you look at a rope, it's twisted. It's fibers that are, that are fixed. And what it means is, the more you spend time waiting before him, there is, a, there is a twisting of the fiber of your spirit and his spirit. The more you spend time waiting before his presence, not looking for anything in particular, just being with him. There is a twisting. There is a braiding. It's your spirit and his spirit being intertwined as one spirit. For they that are joined to the Lord are one spirit with the Lord, the scripture says. 
And then strength is given to you. Power is given to you. Renewal is given to you. All of these things are given to you. As you are braiding yourself to him. It is to come to him. It is to be yoked to Christ. being yoked to the Lord. Yoked in oneness with him. If you want to get deeper in your walk with the Lord, learn to wait. Learn to wait before his presence. Let me give you some examples of this. And then what we'll do is we'll take some questions at the end. But let me give you some examples of this. Many times when we go to God, what, we, what, it, what ends up happening is we come to him with a list. Or we start magnifying the wrong voices immediately when we go to him. Or we magnify our own feelings or our frustrations. And what ends up happening is that those voices, the desire for things, the worries, the concerns, the um, the magnification of the wrong voices, What will happen is when we do that, we become distracted and we lose focus. We lose the the ability to connect with him. Why? Because we are so thinking about everything else instead of being with him. This is what it means to wait. This is what it truly means. I will respond to questions at the end. This is what it means to wait. It looks like this. You get up. Maybe you find, number one, you find the easiest time to be alone. The best time where you're the most restful. For me and for many others, It's early in the morning. Maybe for you, it's late in the afternoon. Or maybe for you, it could be very late at night when everyone's in bed. You have to practically find when you're most quiet. You have to find where you're most rested. Where your thoughts are less distracted. For me... It's early morning because I just woke up. I'm not thinking about my day. My day hasn't even started yet. There are no cares because the day just began. Maybe the Lord is calling you to do that. And what ends up happening is it's easier to connect with the Holy Spirit because there's not many distractions. It's easier to connect with God because there's not many things that are demanding your attention. For some of you, you wake up and the first thing you grab is your phone. I've been there. And what ends up happening is you get sucked into a vortex of distractions. And then you wonder why it's very difficult for you to press into God's presence. Well, it's because you filled your mind with all of the stimuli and the stimulations of your cell phone or the news or, or whatever it is, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be your phone. It could just be anything. And so what I would encourage you to do is when you spend time with the Lord, put everything away, find yourself a time where you're able just to be secluded 
where you're where you're able to just put everything at a baseline where you're able to rest because that's where God is in the rest. That's the first thing I would tell you. The second thing I would tell you is once you find a place where you're at rest or a time of day or where you're at rest, where there's not distractions and cares, when it's the most quiet, the second thing I'd encourage you to do is begin by being still. That's waiting. Learn to be still. Now, don't get discouraged when it doesn't come easy. Don't get discouraged. You're learning. Maybe the first 15 seconds, you were able to be still. And then your thoughts start moving somewhere else. Well, begin to magnify the Lord. Just, Jesus, I worship you. Begin to open your mouth. Begin to praise him. And then get quiet again. Learn to be with him. Then when the thoughts and the distractions come, begin to magnify him again. Lord Jesus, I worship you, Father. I just come before you. And then get yourself where you're still again. You see? And at first... It, it may seem like every five seconds you're doing that. That's okay. You're learning to be still. Stillness does not come immediately. It's a practice. Just like you practice prayer, you practice his presence. You, how do you do that? You, you, you practice being still. And when, what ends up happening is you go from 15 seconds being still and then you find yourself five minutes being still. It's not about the quantity of time, but the quality of waiting with the Lord. Many times, I need this, I need that. God, I need this. God, I need that. And we miss what God's trying to do. There's a fly thing over here. <laughs> things begin to buzz around. We start looking at all these other stuff. So number one, get secluded. Find a time where you're most restful. Number two, Begin with praise. Begin to elevate the Lord. Begin to magnify him. You want to know why? Because if you don't, you will begin to magnify other voices without you even realizing it. Let me give an example. You go into your prayer time. You'll spend time with the Lord. And if you don't begin with praise, you're going to be like, man, I feel this, or I don't feel the Lord, or I feel bored, or see, you're magnifying your flesh. You're magnifying the other cares. You're magnifying the other things. Can't do that. So begin with praise. Praise is not limited to a song. Praise is you lifting your attention to the Lord. And it gets easier with time. You'll realize how easy it is. We make it difficult. And as you begin to magnify the Lord, there's a, you become still. You enter into rest. And as you enter into rest, that is waiting before the Lord. We don't wait until God shows up. We're waiting to get our, our stuff in order. God's presence is always with us. What happens is our awareness of God's presence diminishes because we've got to get to a place where we're still. 
He's waiting for you. That's why you have to wait for him. Wait upon him. Excuse me. Wait upon him. Let me, let me, let me, let me say this as well. Many times what ends up happening is we worship our feelings or the lack thereof feeling. And we allow that to dictate the reality of what God is like. Well, we're not, we're not meant to be led by feelings. Oh, I don't feel God. He's not here. No, it's not that he's not there. It's that you have to be still and quiet. Oh, I feel oppressed. Okay, you may feel oppressed. You may feel the heaviness. You may feel a burden, but you need to lose sight of yourself and look to him. You cannot look at the Lord and yourself at the same time. You've got to look to him. That is what waiting looks like. Let me give you an example. So this morning, I had a um, very unusual night. Um, I woke up. There was some some spiritual warfare that I was sensing and feeling, and um, there was this heavy weight of oppression that the enemy was trying to throw at me. Now I'm making myself vulnerable, but in my weakness, you'll find you'll find the glory of God in it. Because if I can share my stories with you, I want you to be refreshed and encouraged that God can do the same. So this morning, uh, it was just very strange. I just kind of woke up and um, I was feeling this resistance, this this spiritual uh, warfare. I'm not going to get into it just right now for the sake of, the, of, of, of what I'm trying to convey here. But as soon as I got up, I had a decision to make. Am I going to grab my phone or am I going to grab the word? Am I going to go back to sleep or am I going to relish the time that this is my moment with the Lord? So I had to make a decision. I got up, grabbed me a cup of coffee chugged it down. Sometimes, you know, if you're tired, drink some coffee. I mean, whatever, like this is practical. Let We're talking about practical steps of waiting before the Lord. And I felt this uh, oppression, demonic oppression. Do you know what I did? Grabbed my Bible, went to the living room and sat with the Lord. And see what ends up happening is if you start magnifying, if you, there was something in me that wanted to go, I bind this spirit of this and that and that and that. I didn't even do that. You want to know why? Because when you start doing that and you start opening your day like that, we're just binding and rebuking and all of that. You know what you're doing? You're, you're actually magnifying the enemy. Now, I'm not against rebuking. I'm not against binding. I'm, trust me, I'm not against that at all. But what I'm saying is you don't open your day like that. Don't give the enemy any breathing space. Don't give him any airtime. Don't give him any of your attention. Give God all of your attention. Let me, let me tell you. Let me tell you what occurred. I sat in my living room. I sat. And the, the thought came. Let me tell you all the thoughts. The thought came, all this oppression. I worship you, Lord. And I started thinking about how all things are under the feet of Jesus. He disarmed the principalities and powers. And I began to open my mouth, thanking the Lord. Then, you know, you want to know the other thought that came to me? Oh, 
I'm not feeling anything. Oh, I'm, I'm not really feeling. You know what I did? I took my eyes off of myself and I placed them back on the Lord. And I started worshiping him, lifting my hands quietly in silence, just being still. Praying in the spirit, praising, being quiet. You know what began to happen? As I began to do that, all of those thoughts began to dissipate. The oppression, the distracting thoughts, the, the, the overt self-awareness of my own stuff. I began to offer myself to the Lord and lift him. You know what began to happen? So I was waiting, sitting there, waiting, 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 waiting for everything just to fall and waiting on him. Guess what happened? Renewal. The awareness of God's presence. A very heightened sense of the glory of God. A beautiful strength of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because I, because I came into the presence of God, letting go of all of my cares, all of my concerns, all of the other voices, and lifting him and his voice alone. When you do that, God renews you. Renewal of strength comes in the waiting. Here's another example that I can give you. It's kind of like this. You have... Uh, a soulish Christian, and then you have a spiritual Christian. Let me give you some examples. Soulish Christian, spiritual Christian. There are many soulish Christians, not many spiritual Christians. Now, what am I talking about? The soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. The soul is you. We have a soul, but we also have a spirit. Soulish Christians are led by their soul. Spiritual Christians are led by their spirit. There's a difference. The soulish Christian leans in their understanding. They're led by their own feelings. their own emotions. The spiritual Christian disregards self, their own feelings, their own, their own emotions, their own thoughts, and places their attention on the Lord. The spiritual Christian still battles the soul. The soulish Christian magnifies the soul. They magnify their feelings, their thoughts. They magnify all of the cares. The spiritual Christian is led not by what they feel, but in whom they believe in. See what I'm saying? And when you become focused on God's presence, your soul will begin to align itself to that. 
First Thessalonians 5.23, Paul said, I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul gives us a beautiful mystery there. He shows us in 1 Thessalonians 5.23 that we are spirit, soul, and body. That is who you are, spirit, soul, and body. It's interesting that he never says body, soul, and spirit. He never says soul, spirit, body. He says spirit, soul, and body. The believer is spirit. They must prioritize spirit. They must prioritize the spiritual above their own soul, above their own feeling, above how they feel or their own body. And when you prioritize the spirit, the soul and the body become aligned. When your spirit is connected to God's spirit, when you bypass all the fluff and all the all of the all of the soulish stuff and you bypass that and you connect spirit to spirit your soul will begin to become illumined by the peace in the life in the light of the spirit your mind your will and your emotions will be subjugated by your spirit. Your spirit will have dominance over your soul when you live like this. Then you begin to have the mind of Christ. You begin to think his thoughts. Your will becomes his will. And your emotions become his where your soul becomes a conduit of his character. Do you want to get close to the Lord? Then you must learn to disregard yourself. Jesus told us these words. He says, if you want to be my disciple, let him carry his cross and deny himself. Serving the Lord, having relationship with the Lord, is about keeping your eyes on Him and losing sight of yourself. If you lose sight of yourself, you will find true life. But if you're holding on to everything, you will lose. That's exactly how it is with the Lord. When you spend time with him, you're trying to hold on to all this stuff. You're trying to hold on to these cares, these distractions, these, you're trying, you lose, you lose. But if you let go of all that, you'll begin to find true life and you'll begin to operate under a higher grace. You begin to operate by the spirit of grace. That's what he wants. Too many believers are adopting a very wrong mindset. Too many believers are magnifying the thoughts of self and the deceits of the devil. And you've got to get past yourself to find the Spirit. Does that make sense? Now look. Let's look at it again. And then we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll answer some questions. Excuse me, it says, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. 
Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes, some may say, I'm waiting on the Lord, but I'm not receiving strength. You're not waiting on the Lord. Yes, I'm waiting on the Lord, but I'm not really receiving the renewal that I need. You're not really waiting on him. It is impossible for God to lie. He says, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. It doesn't say it might. He shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The reason why maybe you feel like you're waiting on the Lord and you're not really receiving the renewal of strength is because you're not waiting on him properly. You're still allowing the cares and the distractions and the woes and the worries and the, all of these things to grip your attention rather than the Lord. Amen? Okay. It's been a little bit of a long stream today. If you have a question, put a Q in front of your question so that I can see it. But make sure that it's in relation to what we're discussing. Okay? Make sure that your question is related to what we're talking about. The Lord really wants to renew you. The Lord wants to deepen your fellowship with him like never before. It's found in his presence as you wait. Just wait before the Lord. Your thoughts, your worries, all of this stuff starts happening. All this stuff starts growing. All of these voices, just wait literally wait sit somewhere and don't do anything and just wait let all of the cares let let them all just peel away layer by layer amen and i'm telling you when you do that you will receive so much renewal. Amen. Okay, first question here. Is waiting on the Lord... Hold on a second. Uh, where are we at here? Is waiting on the Lord something we do all day long, or is it in our quiet time? Waiting on the Lord... Um, waiting on the Lord is a lifestyle. Waiting on the Lord can look like your quiet time with the Lord. And waiting on the Lord can look like as you're all throughout your day. And so don't put God in a formulaic box. Just learn to wait on the Lord. Uh, Greg says, is it wrong to be in silence the entire time in a prayer time? No, there's nothing wrong with that. Most, to be honest with you, when I spend time with the Lord, mostly it's in silence and in worship. There's nothing wrong with that. There are seasons in which there are moments of silence. There are seasons of silence. There are moments in which God wants you to be still, and there's nothing wrong with that. Just as long as the Spirit is leading you. God doesn't want us to make him a formula. He is relational. How long do you spend each day waiting? I understand time duration does not matter. Time duration does not matter. It's not about the quantity of time, but the quality of time. Some of the most powerful moments I've had with the Lord were five minutes, 15 minutes. 
It's about the quality of time. Don't put yourself in a religious uh, schedule that you that is impossible for you to keep. And then put yourself in a cycle of guilt because you're not fulfilling your tasks. Don't treat the Lord as a task. Don't treat yourself as a taskmaster. Don't treat the Lord as a chore, but as someone you love and cherish. Um, the Thabo says, after finding a time and a place when we're alone and quiet, beginning and praising on God, what do we do? I don't know. He will lead. Why do I say that? Because he's a person. So get yourself quiet. Begin praising the Lord. Don't worry about what to do. Just be with the Lord. Paul gives us this wonderful uh, reality in Romans 8. It says, Likewise, the Spirit intercedes for us, for we do not know how to pray as we ought to, but the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You don't have to know what to do. Just be with Him. Amen? Better says, What does being renewed in strength look like? It means grace the renewal of strength is spiritual. It is spiritual vitality. It is spiritual strength for your life. It is to be renewed is to have peace, joy, the fruit of the spirit, the strength, the passion, the vigor for God, and the ability to do things in life without fatigue, but spiritual rest. That's a good question. This is a very common question. What if you do have that tug to separate yourself, but you have many distractions, children and husband, then you need to carve time. Even if you have many distractions, even there are many things, carve time. Maybe it's late at night. Maybe it's early in the morning. Maybe you just need to get away for a little bit. Carve time. Make time. That is your responsibility, and God will do the rest. Are you able to post a simple diagram and explanation of soul and spiritual? Thank you. I have a book. It's a free ebook. It's called From uh, Glory to Glory, Seven Keys to the Uncommon Spiritual Life. I talk about it in that book. It's free. Just visit fathersglory.org and put in your email address there and you'll receive the free ebook. And I talk about it there. Okay. How do I know if I'm battling with a stronghold in my mind or soul if it's a demon? Let go of the demon. Lose sight of yourself and the thought. I want you to start repositioning your mind, reorient yourself to exalt the presence of the Lord. And God will do what he needs to do in you and straighten out what needs to be straightened out. The problem is strongholds are to be torn down, cast down, not out, down. Anything that comes against the knowledge of Christ is a stronghold of the mind that needs to be casted down. How do I know if it's a stronghold of the, of the mind? Does the imagination or thought contradict the exalted Christ? Then it is a, strong, a stronghold and it needs to be torn down. How do you do that? By lifting up the Lord Jesus, losing sight of yourself, and getting into the Word of God and believing what it says. I encourage you to read Romans all the way up to Jude. Stay there and eat the Word until the Holy Spirit reveals to you your identity in Him. Many times, again, we magnify the wrong thing. Who cares if it's a demon? Who cares? No, no, that sounds crazy. Listen to what I'm saying. Who cares if it's a demon? I want you to put your care on Christ. 
and the Lord will take care of the rest. Don't give no devil no, no foothold. Don't give him any free space of living in the mind. Begin to exalt him, the Lord Jesus. Begin to elevate him. Fill your mind with him, and he will do a great work. I promise you that. Do not be distracted by devils. Focus on Christ. Waiting when you just had a baby can be challenging. That is true. How can you do this and not feel bad after a minute of not being able to wait? Grace. Give yourself grace. God knows that. God knows what's going on. In the middle of you having your little baby, begin to worship the Lord. Bring your little one with him. He loves you. Give yourself grace. Okay, alone time, worship, music, or no? Do you find helps focus or draws it? Okay, this is a good question. Um, what I would say is this. Every person is different. For me, I when I spend time alone with Jesus, I don't really listen to anything. Because I've... Uh, trained myself to be still. There's nothing wrong with listening to worship music in your alone time. It, it's not a right or a wrong way. It's about connecting with the Lord. So if you want to connect the Lord uh, to the Lord with worship, then worship, put some worship music. If you want to connect the Lord being silent, the aim and the point of your fellowship with the Lord is communing with him. Maybe for you, uh, silence is, is, is too much for you. Just put some worship on. Don't, don't um, put him in a box. There are many times where um, I will just be silent and I will have nothing. But then there are other times that I'll just put music because it helps me be quiet. It's about being still. It's not about the, this stillness in the ears. It's about the stillness in here. Maybe for you, being stillness, uh, reaching stillness is being quiet. Maybe for you, being stillness is putting on some worship and it gets your, your mind and your heart quiet. Do what helps you to be still. Amen? All right, let's look here. Yeah, is waiting on the Lord a way to know him? Absolutely. This is a good one. Lena says, when thoughts pop up, how do you deal with them? The way you deal with them is by praising him. So you're worshiping and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I got to fold laundry. And this thought starts hitting your head. Open your mouth and begin to praise him. And as you do that, it focuses your mind on him. And as you do that, it gets, it gets easier with time. The more you practice to be still like this, the easier it is with time. And you'll, with time well spent with the Lord, those thoughts will become less and less and less. It's often hard at first because this is something that we're not used to doing. But even if Thoughts pop in your head a million times, a million times begin to magnify the Lord and a million times reorient yourself to the presence of the Lord again. It is simply to put your attention on the Holy Spirit. All right. All right. Uh, Zai says, I normally do it before sleeping when I felt his presence. Is it okay to sleep? Yes, there's nothing wrong with that. He gives his beloved sweet sleep, scripture says. James says, what scriptures are good to meditate on to help the transformation of, uh, of the soulish Christian and the spirit Christian? The All of it. Read the Psalms, read the letters of Paul, read Revelation, read whatever whatever the Lord leads. 
all of the word of God is all of the word of God. All right. Well, it is now that time. It's time for us to get going. If you can, if you can, please do me a favor and like the stream. Oh, I forgot to put a new thing here. Okay. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't had a chance. Uh, visit our website. Go to fathersglory.org and input your information there and sign up to receive our free ebook called uh, From Glory to Glory, Seven Keys to the Uncommon Spiritual Life. To partner with the ministry, you can text GLORY, G-L-O-R-Y, to the number 801801. All of your monthly proceeds goes into the Ministry of Father's Glory and helps us to provide free events, free ebooks, and uh, staff, uh, salary for staff, and also missions. Amen. And also very soon we will let you know in January, uh, all of our, uh, our, we do a monthly partners Zoom meeting. Now all of, for our friends and part, uh, for our, what am I saying? For our partners in the ministry, uh, it's not too late to do that. Um, and basically uh, that Zoom meeting is basically where the proceeds are going, projects, different things that we have going on in the future. Amen. All right, my friends, it is now that time for me to get going. Love you all, and we will see you Friday in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Have a very blessed day in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.